The concept of corresponding angles isn't terribly complex, but it can be a little bit tricky. The idea behind corresponding angles is that if you have two lines that are parallel, so we'll call this line A and line B, line A, line B, make sure we actually make them lines, there we go, and they're cut by a transversal, we'll say line C here, sorry that one's not straight, but I'm kind of eyeballing it. If those two are cut by the transversal line C, then any two angles that are in the same location on both pairs are going to be equal. So if we call this sort of upper left hand, if we look at the four angles here, one, two, three, and four, that are formed by line A and line C, and then we look at another two, another four angles that are formed by lines B and C, we have one, two, three, and four, we can see that sort of the groups of angles that are in the same position have the same numbers here. And that's deliberate because those angles that have the same numbers are equal. So both number ones up here and down here will be equal. And both number twos will be equal because they're both the upper right hand angle on both pairs. The lower, le lower right hand angle, three, both of those will be equal and four, lower left hand angle, will be equal. So corresponding angles tell us that if you have two parallel lines crossed by a transversal, any two angles in the same position on both parallel lines will be equal angles. And it also tells us, and works sort of in reverse, that if you have two lines and you don't know for certain that they're parallel, you think they might be, but you don't know that they are for sure, if they're crossed by a transversal, if you can identify that the same angle, so the corresponding angles in this case, are both the same degree measure, then you can say that these two lines are indeed parallel because that corresponding angles theorem works in reverse. So that's about it for rules. Let's take a look at the examples.